In this demo, I'll give you some tips for working with headers and footers. Let me show you how to delete existing headers and footers in a document, how to modify a footer inserted from the footer gallery, and how to add a file name and path to a header. Sometimes I inherit a document from someone else that has already been formatted with headers and footers. I can change the headers and footers to suit my needs or, as I'll show you now, I can delete them altogether and start fresh. As I scroll down through the document, I see that there is no header or footer on the title page, that the header changes for each chapter, and that the footer stays the same throughout the document. At the end of the document, I double-click in the bottom margin to open the header and footer workspace. From the footer label, I can see that the document is divided into three sections and that the footer in this section is linked to the previous one in section two. On the insert tab in the header and footer group, I click footer and then click remove footer to delete the footer. As I scroll up through the document, I see that the footers have been deleted from the previous sections as well. This is because the footers in each section are linked as indicated by the same as previous label and the highlighted link to previous button. When I scroll to the title page, I see that the footer label says first page footer section one and that in the options group, the different first page option is selected. This option is selected automatically when a cover page is inserted from the cover page gallery as this one has been. I scroll back down to the end of the document and click in the header for the last page, which displays the chapter title for chapter three. In the header and footer group, I click header and then click remove header to remove the header. In the navigation group, I click previous section and see that section two still has a header. Unlike the footers, which were linked from section to section, the headers are not. That's because a different header was inserted for each section. Notice that the label does not say same as previous and link to previous is not highlighted. I continue up through the document in this manner, clicking previous section and removing the headers for each until all of the headers are removed. Now I can start clean with all of the headers and footers deleted and I'm ready to add my own. Now let's look at a second example where I've inherited a document with one of the predefined footer styles from the footer gallery. I want to keep it, but I want to change its format so it reads page X of Y instead of just the page number. To do this, I have to change the original gallery template by clicking to the right of the page number and type a space, then the word of, and then another space. To change the page number field that's in this predefined footer, I click the Insert tab, and in the text group, I click Quick Parts. I click Field, and in the Field dialog box, I select Num Pages for Number of Pages, and then click OK. As I scroll through the document, you can see that the page number changes, but the total number of pages stays the same. The change I've made to the footer affects only the document I'm working in, not the template in the footnote gallery. But I like the way this footer looks now, and I know I'll want to use it again in other documents. At this point, I could click Quick Parts, and then click Save Selection to Quick Parts Gallery to save my footer as a building block, which I could then use in any document. For more information on this process, See the link in the article accompanying this demo. Finally, let's look at an example where I create a header that is a file name and path, which will update automatically whenever I move the document. To do this, I double click in the top margin to open the header workspace. In the insert group, I click Quick Parts and then click Field. Under Field Names, I click File Name. And under Field Options, I select Add Path to File Name. Then I click OK. And there it is. The path and file name of my document displays in the header and will update automatically whenever I move the document. If your document is divided into sections, you can just copy the field from one header section to the next.